Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. In this clip, we look at the first of two examples on blown film. We begin, as usual, with the observations offered by the client. It is a blown film that had trouble with bagginess when the parent rolls were unwound. Nothing unusual at first noticing bagginess on pound unwinding is a quite common observation. What is slightly unusual for this blown film was that it did not have an oscillator. In the next clip, we will deal with the only slightly more complicated example of oscillated blown film. In any case, the problem existed from startup a year ago. In that time, the client had made no saleable material and there was much blame and finger pointing all around. The machine builder in good faith spent millions trying to resolve the bagginess without any success. The client had already studied the problem well enough to know that rolls whose peak-to-peak -peak hardness variation exceeded 150 would not be acceptable to the customers. They could not reliably make rolls to that level so that waste was too high to be economically viable. What the client did not notice was the unacceptably baggy rolls also had a diameter variation exceeding 40 thousandths of an inch or about 1,000 microns. The reason they did not notice is as you should now come to expect that the diameter variation is small and thus hard to see. One had to use a machined bar to make the bumps readily visible. Note, straight edges or rulers, no matter how straight, do not work well for this purpose because they do not easily sit squarely on a roll. That is why we use machined bar stock. What was even more important for troubleshooting purposes were patterns in the blown film rolls that the client also did not notice. Yes, they noticed the hard spots on the rolls, but not that the hard spots had a pattern. For those who are not familiar with blown film, it is manufactured as a tube that is split in half lengthwise to make two rolls. The key observations they missed is that the hard spots only occurred in two different locations on a parent roll when they occurred. Some rolls had no lumps. Some rolls had a lump on the front half. Some rolls had a lump on the back half. Some rolls had two lumps. Recall that we said that the shape tool will always be used in baggy web troubleshooting. So, the question is, what is the shape of the problem? You may pause the clip if you wish to think about this for a moment. The shape of the problem is a four-sided bubble. In other words, problems can occur in any one of four potentially defective parts of the bubble and in any combination, producing the four patterns observed in the parent rolls. Applying our trusty shape tool, we note that the shape of the problem must resemble the shape of the cause. Thus, the root cause must be four-sided. Two potential candidates came to mind that might have four sides. That is, the corners of the two collapsing frames and the four custom auxiliary heaters that the client requested. We will test both. First, we aggressively moved one collapsing frame side farther than anyone had ever seen it move before. While a big broad center bagginess appeared in the middle of one parent roll, this is not the quarter point pattern we were looking for. Next, we turned on the heaters in various combinations and found that we could make bagginess in any of the patterns that we observed. 
This should not be surprising to people familiar with blown and cast film. That is, hot makes thin. What is surprising is that the special request from the client, custom heaters, is what caused the problem. This should have been immediately recognized as risky by both builder and buyer because even small air currents from merely opening a door in an extrusion room can wreck a thin, blown film bubble. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my Plant Practical video series. Stay tuned for the next clip where we will deal with a more common but more complicated oscillated blown film.